Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be recording training games until I uh, go to Slovakia to play the tournament. Uh, once again, thanks everybody for, for the support and the kind comments. Uh, it does mean a lot. And I'm going to try to find uh, a longer time control game here in the lobby with somebody higher rated. Uh, but if I don't get it in a minute or so, then I'm going to play 15 plus 15 once again. Uh, I figure that if I set my own challenge, then it might take too much time, but I might find something good here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I would like to play something like uh, this guy Carlos Cuevas, but he's lower rated. So... Yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. I'm just going to play a 15 plus 15 game. I'm playing a league game tomorrow, so um, I need the practice. I've been preparing uh, for my opponent, and now I hope I can play a good game to, to get into calculating mode. So let's see. Uh, this is Sicilian. Uh, I'm actually not sure what my main move now is. I play both knight f3 and knight c3. Not sure which is my favorite either. And which I like playing more. Uh, yeah, no need to waste time. I'm going to play knight f3. Even though I've been having a lot of fun with knight c3 lately. Okay, takes, takes. Uh, I'm going to play something strange now. I'm going to play a sort of weird Prince Sicilian. But I've been trying to make the variation work even with the knight on c6. So this is quite risky, but I'm going to try it anyway. Now his main move is obviously e5, knight b3, d5. Uh, it's it's not the best move, definitely, but uh, knight c3 is the main move. But I want to try it, nevertheless. Okay, this is a mistake now, uh, because he gave me enough time to play c4, so a6 isn't really the move here now, after... After yeah, after that, knight b3, I have a better position because I have a hole on d5, which I can exploit. Uh, queen b6 is the only move that causes a bit of concern, but should really be okay. Uh, <coughs> after knight c3, and uh, I can play bishop e2, and queen here, and queen here, or queen here, bishop here. So yeah, now... Uh, since he played d6, I don't really have any more issues, and this position is now fine after I play bishop here, because he has no way to to disrupt my plans, and uh, I'm just going to play knight c3, bishop e2, castle, queen d2, rook c1, rook d1, and it's fairly easy to play this position now with white. So this is something that I might have... Uh, I won't have it in my uh, league game tomorrow because I'm black, but I might have it... Uh, at the tournament, it's highly likely I often played, play Marozzi bind positions and weird Prince Sicilians with pawn to f3. So now I guess bishop e7 is, is a good move for him, bishop e6 as well. He should play both without too much thinking. I'm going to play knight c3, bishop e2, castles, and then queen d2, rook c1. Really, uh, the order isn't that important, but I want to... But I want to castle as soon as possible, get my rook into c1 so that I can have a uh, knight to d5 with the queen on c7, uh, where he cannot capture. If he doesn't play queen c7, then uh, I'm not really sure where he develops his queen. Uh, he could also go for... Uh, yeah, queen c7 is a very logical move. But if he plays queen c7, I'm going to play rook c1. So I'm happy because I didn't waste too much time in the opening. Now, there could be some issues uh, with rook c8 and putting pressure on c4, but in any case, I have knight d5 defending the pawn indirectly. So I'm just going to castle. I'm expecting rook c8 uh, because it's probably the best move. I think rook c8 and queen c7 uh, are his main plans. He can't really go for b5, 
D5 is also out of the question, that's the point of the Marozzi bind, so he doesn't have easy breaks. And they're basically playing against the E7 bishop, which is a bad piece throughout the game. Uh, if he tries to free it up with some knight moves, then after queen to d2 he doesn't really have any more squares, I can always play g3. And unless he plays d5, then the bishop is going to be a bad piece. It's sort of like my bishop on e2, but my bishop has uh, more scope because uh, because the play is going to take place on the queen side mostly. And if any b5 or d5 ever happened, then both bishops are freed up, but mine is better because it often has targets on a6. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very comfortable with this setup, and I would advise you to, to play this against the Sicilian. You can play it against the knight of... Uh, you can play it against knight c6 Sicilians, and you basically avoid a lot of main lines, which is great for white. <clears throat> the thing is that at one point, yeah, so okay, he's probably going for f5 or bishop uh, g5. So I'm going to play queen to d2. There are some plans with f5, uh, queen, to, queen to d2, f5, and then f4, but then I'm going to play bishop f2 and still be fine, so I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> if he takes takes, then I have the f-file open just the same as he does. I might try to win over the c-file uh, with knight here. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Uh, not sure where the knight goes, but uh, now that the bishop is on e7, the only squares are b8 and a7, so not very good squares. So. I think I'm going to do that and with the plan of bishop b6 or knight b6, trying to embarrass his position a bit. If he takes, uh, then bishop takes, pawn takes, knight moves, rook takes, queen takes, and I have rook uh, rook to c1 taking over the c-file. And it's his position is really disconnected. Yeah, he can't really do that because his bishop is hanging. So bishop takes, pawn takes, knight moves, uh, rook takes, rook. He would have to take the rook with the knight, otherwise his bishop on e7 is hanging. If he takes with the queen, I win the queen and the bishop. So it's easier to play for white. I've often seen this plan with f5, but it's not really such a big deal after you play f3. It could be a problem if I, it's only defended by the knight. Uh, but in f3 positions. I'm happy if he pushes because he doesn't have that much play with g5, g4. He's defended sufficiently and if he takes I'm also happy because I keep the Morozzi bind and we share the f5. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to go to the tournament. I haven't played uh, a tournament in, the lo in a long time and uh, thanks for, for making it possible. I mean, thank you. Uh, so in round one, I'm going to be playing a Fide Master. I've been looking at the starting list and sort of preparing against potential opponents. There are four of them. Uh, and hmm, since I don't know which color I will be, it's really hard to prepare. And they basically all play D4 systems. Uh, so my repertoire is narrow. I'm mostly afraid of Tory attack and the London system and the Trampovsky and stuff like that, stuff like that, because they probably might go for that against a lower rated opponent. Uh, in an e4, I think I'm going to try out the Scandinavian for the first time in a tournament game because I think I have a lot more uh, chances to enter a peaceful game than with the Karo Khan so against a much higher rated opponent that might be a smart move although if... if uh, well, I won't be able to prepare at all because the... Uh, because the pairings will be uh, out just before the round Sorry to whoever is challenging me, uh, I'm playing at the moment, so <clears throat> I have to decline. My opponent is having a long thing, which is which is fine, because it's he obviously cannot take on d5. And I'm threatening knight b6, bishop b6. It's not really such a strong threat, but still it's uncomfortable. And I think if he if he plays nothing, 
Then I'm just going to play rook f to d1. Uh, okay, I'm sure he cannot take. Because now after... Yeah, he... Yeah, I'm a moron, because uh, in the last variation where I calculated that I would win his bishop, I figured that I still have my knight on d5, so... But it's still uncomfortable for him, I'm going to get the c-file, and his knight is going to be very awkward after knight b8. Knight b8, rook takes, queen takes, rook c1, and then I simply play bishop a7. So after bishop a7, he loses the knight because he doesn't have this square. And if he moves his other knight to f6, then the knight is still attacked by the rook and by the bishop and only defended by the queen, and the rooks of the queen will have to take first. So the best might be to give up a pawn with knight d4. I'm not sure. I think this is... Uh, yeah, so now my calculation was rook c8, queen c8, rook c1. Queen somewhere. I mean, I can at least play knight a5. So I'm just going to go for that. Uh, I think this is much better for white. I have the c-file, I have everything in the position. If he plays queen d7, I think I will play bishop b6 but then queen a4 my pieces are better than his this bishop is a dead piece for now my rook is better than his rook I have the bishop pair I have a weakness on d6 to exploit uh, <clears throat> so maybe now just uh, I'm wondering about knight a5 knight a5 threatening to take on b7 and if he plays uh, b6 or b5 then knight c6 should be just much much better if he defends with queen d7 then he has lost the tempo and i managed to develop my knight and i can probably play queen to b4 so knight a5 queen d7 queen b4 and b6 or b5 have to be has to be played unless he wants to lose a pawn and then knight c6 so yeah uh I'm going to play that because I don't see what's wrong with that. There's no other way to defend but queen d7 and then queen b4 should be much better. Activating all of my pieces. So yeah, as I said, in the Marozzi bind, if anything happens on the C file and stuff gets exchanged, then my bishop is obviously better than his. The worst piece in Marozzi bind structures is the E2 bishop, but for black, the E7 bishop is a much bigger, bigger issue. Doesn't really have squares. Yeah, th this is a temporary move. So not really a big deal. I don't think I can get a tempo on the queen because after queen d7 I'm losing two pieces. So I have to move my bishop somewhere. And I think bishop a7 actually embarrasses the knight.
But wait, if bishop a7, knight d7, knight b7, then he has... Then he has queen a8, winning some of my pieces. So bishop a7 isn't that smart. So either bishop f2 or bishop a7. Bishop a7, knight d7. Bishop a7, knight d7, knight b7, he has queen a8, and then my bishop is on a7, my knight is on b7, the queen is attacking them both. Do I have any... Do I have anything? I'm not sure. So I think I have to move my bishop back to f2, because this attack with queen a8 seems strong. Let's just rethink that. Bishop a7, knight d7. Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't even have to move the knight. Well, he does if he wants to defend the pawn, but... Bishop a7, knight d7, knight b7, queen a8. Can I defend both of my pieces? I guess not. I don't have rook c8, I don't have... Yeah, I think this was the correct decision. So, okay, now I was looking at queen before. This doesn't really change anything. Just trying to, to win the pawn. And once again, I'm, I would be very happy if he plays b5 here. b5, knight c6, knight takes, rook takes, and his queen side is falling apart. His pieces on the king side are still dead. And if he doesn't move the pawn now, I think... Uh, He's just going to lose it. So okay, I have more time, so I'm happy. <clears throat> I could even take with the queen, but I don't want to, I think. Yeah, I think I think this position is winning for white. It's not that he loses a pawn, but there are a lot of consequences there. Uh, all the plays on the C file. And I'm going to have an active rook on C6, and uh, his A6 pawn is going to be horribly weak. He's going to have to defend it with the queen, and then queen A5 wins the pawn. But the worst thing is that... Uh, he actually has dead pieces on the king side. So at some point he's going to have to play knight c7, which is going to have to be defended by the queen. And then he's probably going to have to play bishop d8. So, bishop d8 now. Now I think I can take with the queen because... No, I can't take with the queen because... Uh, queen takes b7, bishop. Uh, queen takes b7, bishop takes knight, and then if I take the queen, it's defended. So I need to take with the knight. And when I take with the knight, does he have any tricks? I'm not sure he does. Knight b7. What can he do? I mean, he can trade with bishop a5, but. Yeah, I'm just I'm just going to take. It's probably a good move, and I'm not really worried about his options. It doesn't seem that he has that much. If he plays a5, I'm just going to take it. <clears throat> now I want to get my rook back to a5 and into c6. Now his his e8 knight is also stuck because if it moves d6 is hanging. Not a good position for for black, <clears throat> I have to say. Now I am actually threatening uh, bishop a7 also. 
After bishop a7, he has to play bishop c7. Bishop a7, bishop c7. Uh, I can then take bishop takes and take on a6 with my bishop. So bishop a7, bishop c7 is the only move. Yeah, I, I think I can just take this. I. I don't think there's anything here for him. So just knight takes. Knight a5, bishop a5, queen a5. He doesn't have any checks. That's important. Knight a5, queen check doesn't work. There's my bishop on f2. He can play knight a6, but then I take it. I'm not sure about this pawn sacrifice. I, I don't think there's anything there, so I'm just going to take it. Yeah, so now it's two pawns up on the queen side and should be a pretty clean position. Yeah, it's just over. Now I'm going to play bishop b5 and rook c7 and... The bishop pair, two extra pawns, should be a very easy win. And I have twice as much time as... Him. So yeah, I'm, I'm. This is a position I've played a lot, and I'm very comfortable in Morozzi bind positions. Black should be more active on the on the queen side with a5 and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, he he his position is busted. Has to be. Because now I'm just going to play rook c8 and he's going to lose. Yeah, uh, the Morozzi bind is very comfortable for white. Black can play energetically early on and try to make something happen, but yeah, now, now he's just losing. Yeah, this was the worst move actually because in other variations he could have played the rook back to f8 defending, but now... There's no rook f8, he's just losing everything here. Maybe knight d7, but then... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to play queen here and that should be enough. He has to play king f8 now. Yeah, okay, so do I trade everything off? I'm going to be left and exchange down. No, I think I can just push my pawn majority on and... He's really stuck, he doesn't have any moves, so I could just queen my pawn. I can also play bishop h4, getting my last piece into play, but this is probably going to be my first think of the game. Uh, maybe I should just win the the d7 knight now. Yeah, I should just win the d7 knight with rook c7. He cannot defend that otherwise. Uh, his queen is falling, so I'm looking at rook c7, he has knight b6, but then I take with check, and then I can take the knight, so this should be enough. His knight on e8 is obviously pinned, so... I guess resigns. <clears throat> yeah, this is complete queenside domination. This is the perfect scenario in the Morozzi bind for white. 
you don't usually see this, but happy with how the game went. I'm, I'm sorry that he didn't, yeah, okay, resigns. Uh, I'm sorry that he didn't play a, more energetically, let's just see the analysis. Uh, so, okay, e4. Now, uh, okay, after this, f3, yeah, he, he needs to play energetically as soon as possible. a6 is obviously a mistake. He can either play e5 or d5. e5 is the most common move. And they don't normally play positions with knight b5. I go for inferior positions like this. And then you have this position, d4, c3. And this position is supposed to be better for black, but I actually like it for white. And I really, I've played one tournament game in the variation and drew two pawns up, which was horrible. But yeah, this, I like playing this. And, you know, I can win a pawn and... Here. No, yeah, I cannot play that. Uh, yeah, probably castles. But basically, it's it says it's worth worse for white, much worse for white. But it really isn't in my opinion. But he played a6, uh, which is a passive move now. C4 and white is immediately better. E5, but now yeah, knight b3 uh, is the position which I like playing. And as I said, the engine always thinks it's better for black, but. Not really, d6 is, is a mistake, and as I said, after d6, I'm very happy. Uh, so bishop e3, uh, bishop e7, knight c3. This is now just a normal Morozzi bind po position, which is by default better for white castles, rook c8. So now there are some plans with a5 trying to dislodge my knight. Uh, I'm not sure at which point, maybe here even it worked. Because uh, the knight gets... No, not here, because the pawn is hanging, but maybe when the rook is still on, on a8. But anyway, after rook c1, he played knight e8, yeah, which is too passive, queen d2. f5, which I don't really want to take, I like these positions. Bishop c takes, and I thought I was better here after, yeah, after knight b8, he's just in trouble. Rook c8, queen c8, rook c1. I'm dominating the only open file, and he doesn't have any squares for his pieces. The engine wants me to take, but I don't really mind f4, so why is knight a5 not good? It's good, but yeah, f4. Bishop a7, I guess, was a mistake, so bishop f2. Yeah, and b5 was the main move here, and just this position would be just horrible. And this is just winning for white, plus 3, so doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, now he's dropping a pawn after bishop h4, bishop h4, queen h4, rook, a, rook a6, and busted. Queen d7... Yeah, queen b4 was correct. Bishop d8 was just bad because I can take. And now f5, another weird move. Yeah, this is, you can see, this this is just completely winning. Plus 6, and the, the reason for that is that black doesn't have any pieces in, in, in play. So, not a very good game from, from black, even though I played the risky opening. So, playing like that sometimes pays off, and... Uh, I've been working on the variations and found that even though the engine hates white, I, they are playable. So if black plays the best moves, I can still play that. Okay, uh, wish me luck for tomorrow's game. Uh, I'm playing tomorrow morning. Hope it goes well. I'm playing board too. Uh, my opponent will be 2070, something like that. I have the black pieces. Hope it go goes well. Uh, and I will record the video after the game as always. Uh, see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks very much for the support once again, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.